over the years, we have completed some amazing projects using the vanilla game mechanics in City Skylines. However, there are two projects, both dealing with water, that we absolutely have to take on if we want Verde Beach to feel truly alive. The beach looks like something out of The Last of Us, it's completely devoid of life, and the park needs water in its lake. And while both of these projects may seem impossible in the vanilla game, in today's episode, I'm going to show you some simple solutions to make it possible. And near the end of the episode, I'm going to go over one major issue that you all pointed out in the comments during the Mulligan episodes that has been crippling our transit network. And we're going to install a hub that I missed. Shout out to Planner Pete for pointing this out. So stay tuned until the end of the episode. And if you like making the impossible possible, hit the like button. And if you prefer to take it easy and work within the rules, hit the like button for that too and let me know what you do in the comments. Or if you'd prefer, drop an emoji that brings a smile to your face for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach, and we have a good one today. We're going to be taking on some really interesting vanilla projects that are going to elevate our community. In particular, we're going to be breathing some life into our beaches, and we're going to be building an artificial lake. And that's where I want to begin, with the lake because at this large new park, there is an area that obviously would be an area that would retain water, and we just need to add a lake to make it official. But before we do that, I wanna name the park, and I wanna give a huge shout out to Colin Burke, who came up with the name of the Sterling Arboretum, and I really, really love the idea of that. So that is what we've named this. So this is the area where we are going to have our lake, and I wanna show you why. When we take a look at the contours, everything else is above this location. So naturally, if there were ever a storm, water would pool in this area. So I think we should make it official. And what we're gonna do is eliminate some of these paths and add a water source and a way for the water to leave. Now this is a difficult project in a vanilla game because you've really got a couple of options. You can either run a path to the water, which is exactly what we did at the zoo. We just carved out a little exit path here, or you can use a water pump. Making that look good is really challenging. And it's one of the reasons why this episode's actually taken a little bit longer to create because I got really stuck on making that look good. And then it dawned on me, it doesn't really have to. You just have to embrace the fact that it's not natural and be okay with that. So let's get started by getting rid of this path. We're gonna re, we're gonna add this back to the build in just a moment, but we're gonna start out by eliminating it. And we're gonna go into our landscaping tools and I wanna lower the ground a little bit further. We're gonna have flooding right here. We're really looking at two or three meters of difference and that's not good enough right now. So let's just drop this down. And you see, we've got a few meters there. It's probably good enough. We're gonna spread this out. Now I'm going to turn up the brush strength. I started out on a very gentle brush strength. But let's basically follow this entire area right here. And we've gotta keep in mind that because these are normal crushed gravel paths, they will terraform with this. We gotta be really careful there. Now that we have the basic outline of our river ready, we are gonna drop down one specific location. I'm thinking down here. And the main reason I want to add our water source right here is our power issue. We're gonna resolve this by jumping our power. So I think that having this close to something else that needs power only makes sense. So let's drop this down a little bit down here. Same story, we'll spread it out. And I don't, I don't need this to be big, it just needs to be big enough. And then we'll go under water. And at the very end, if you have the Natural Disasters DLC, you have a freshwater outlet. So we're gonna place that right here. And obviously that's not beautiful. You could leave it just like this. That would work just fine. But I, find, I figured out something else that I think is gonna make this look really, really good. So we're gonna go into landscaping and we have these new trees. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, we're not doing that. We're not adding water yet. Calm down. <laughs> It's funny, that's not connected to anything, but it's still spewing water out. And that is actually gonna be problematic for us. So remember to stop that. While we're waiting for the water to evaporate, let's get the water out of here. And there are a number of ways to do this. Now, I, I mentioned that I've used a river outlet to the ocean before. That is certainly a valid way of doing it. And the other way that I've, I've done it is with a water pump. There is one more way to do this. And if you watch Chukaboa's video that I'm gonna link to down in the description, 
they have an excellent way of getting water out as well. That said, for me, it's a little bit more complex than I want it to be, and I want to do something fairly simple. So I wanted to hide our water pump quite a bit. It was, it was something that I, I, I kind of agonized over. That said, I don't really think you need to. The, the reason why I, I agonized over it is if you look at it, it's just super tall. But what I'm going to do instead is try to hide this next to our park maintenance facility. So we're going to bring our lake over here, bridge over and have a little area behind here where we hide this with some trees and have it next to our building tucked away like it's some sort of utility shed. So I'm going to clear an area right here. I'm not sure if you're noticing this. I don't know why this is happening. Maybe someone else has an idea. The ruining underneath the trees disappearing and then it's reappearing when I do things. I don't know why it's happening, but it is. And if you see that, I am aware. I'm just not sure how to fix it. So we are going to lower this down just a bit to try to get the height of our water pump to line up with this building right here. And one thing that we could do if we had water here would be to add in a key wall or something of that nature. All of that said, I don't want to do that for one specific reason. I actually want the water pump inside of here. So I'm going to drop this right in here. You can see the height it's a little bit taller than that building. So I'm going to go even lower. Now it's dropped way, way down. And that is kind of what I want to see. This is going to look, it's going to be fairly hidden. I'll put it that way. We're going to have a very narrow path to get here. And I'm going to eliminate this path for the time being. We're going to add this back, but right now we're going to hold off. And I don't know. Maybe, well, let's see. I don't think it's going to let me create a bridge right now, but we'll give it a shot. It did. So I will take that. That's a win. So there we go. That is exactly what we wanted to do. And we're going to eliminate this rock feature here. We'll add something else back in and a whole bunch of our old palm trees will pop up. We don't want that stuff. We don't want that stuff. And now we can take this down to a moderate brush strength. I'm going to grab this height. We're just going to pull it over here. And now you can see what we're gearing at and what is going to happen here. So I want to pull this out. I really want that to be narrow and really feel like kind of a spillway because that's what it is. It's just an overflow. And now we need to figure out a way to hide this a bit. So the first thing that we're going to do is use some of our high vegetation. I love using this asset. It's one of my favorite and it's the way that I love to hide the cliffs. The other thing I love about this asset is it overlaps easily and it makes it look like there is some vegetation on the bottom of the pond. So we're going to use a lot of this asset all the way around the pond, along with some of our tall grasses and maybe even a few rocks mixed in. So around where I expect the water level to be, we are going to add in some of this grass. I want this to poke out the top. Now, I will readily admit, if you look at the water levels, this this pump can pump out more water than that uh, water outlet can produce. So if we wanted it to be at equilibrium and fill all the way to the top, we would need a couple of those water outlets, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to worry too much about that. All of that said, it likely means that this is dry down here, but it's completely fine. Then we can add a couple of trees around here as well. The main purpose of this is to hide our little bit of shame back here. <laughs> so we are going to hide our shame. All right, so the main thing I care about at this point is when you're coming around the road, I don't want you to see that at all. So we are going to add in some live oaks along here. And I might even add some in the water. These are live oaks, so they can be in, in wetter circumstances. So I think that that's fine. And then we have to just kind of deal with a little bit of less than ideal circumstances. So we're going to leave that right there. Now let's take a look at the rest of our terrain. So we're going to turn our contours back on because we need to get all of our terrain work done before we add any water. Because as soon as we add the water, we're done improving the terrain outside of deleting things. So one of the things I want to do is what I mentioned down here. I want to grab the umbrella thorn and we're just going to place this over the top. It's like it was made for this. <laughs> I just love that. So now we can add some landscaping along the side. 
And obviously you can gentle this up as much as you want. This is the way that we're gonna approach it. And I think that this is gonna look awesome. So I'm gonna go around the outside of here and we're, I wanna line this whole thing up with our high vegetation and we'll be right back. Now that we have that done, I want to add our path back to this area over here. Now we're gonna to need to do a bit of grading and uh, some other work, but I think it's gonna work out just fine for us. So we're gonna grab on here and I want only my angle on. And we'll turn our contours back on to make sure we're not doing anything crazy. And here's where we do something crazy. <laughs> because you can see that we're basically putting this on the side of a cliff. So this is where we need to, to, to flatten things out a bit. Now let's talk a little bit about what I've done around here. So I've got the high vegetation and then I've supplemented that with some tall grasses and some random wildflowers. And I think once we start seeing this fill in, it's gonna look very natural. The other thing I wanna do is we can add some fishing piers in here and some other overlooks off the path. It's another reason why I wanna have the path around here. But this is the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and get our water flowing in here. And while that is filling up with water from some unknown source, we're gonna to need to get water pipes over here and we're gonna to need to get power to both of these. Actually, this one's probably okay. Our power situation is interesting and I pause this for a moment. I have a very specific reason, but we'll come to that in just a minute. What I'm thinking that we do here is we are going to jump this with our earthquake sensor. So I think if I add one right about here and another one right about here, that should do the trick for us. Oh, it's so close, but so far. I hate having two of those, but I hate having power lines through here even more. So this will be our solution. And the nice thing about this solution is that we can add a bit of landscaping around it to blend it in. And look at that, it works for a whole bunch of different things. Boy, this is a great tree. Now that this is loading up, I want a feature in here. We, we deleted that large rock feature back there and I kind of want to add something in the middle. There we go. I overlapped lapped a couple of these rock formation 12s and it allows us, it kind of looks like a starfish, so I kind of like that. But uh, <laughs> it, it basically allowed us to, to add a little bit of visual interest here. Obviously, you wouldn't create a rock feature like this, but we're going to pretend it was there. It's always been there. Now's the point where we get to double check our work. I'm a little nervous. I'm not seeing things make its way through here, which makes me think that this is this path right here is just not big enough. So we're gonna slow this down before we flood out our park and increase the size of this gap just a bit. And it's interesting because of the power that this pump has, the water is flowing through, but it looks darn near dry down here. So, you know, if you really wanted to do an excellent job of hiding this and not embrace that sometimes there's a little bit of imperfection, you could drop this even lower. For me, I think that this is fine. It's just a couple of locations like over here. You might get a small glimpse of it. Now I want to finish off this path here. And there we go. That is looking pretty darn good. Now we could, <laughs> we could go a uh, full fill mode here and just start demolishing anything that overlaps the path, but I'm going to try to refrain from doing that. Sometimes there's overlap. Some things aren't 100% perfect and that is a okay. I am going to cover this up though, because that will drive me crazy. We can even add a couple more of these. Now this. I think might have been better in theory than in reality. It looks like a bunch of floating garbage. <laughs> so I think we'll get rid of this. And if that's an approach you want to take, I guess just drop it lower. I'm not overly concerned. It doesn't look that bad. It's clearly a man-made pond and you have to overlook a couple of things like that. Now, what we don't have to overlook is the lack of piers here. So we're going to go into our city park, which is where we have some of these park piers. And for our nature reserve, we have some of these viewing decks. 
And both of those I think are gonna be pretty outstanding. The other one that would work really well is a fishing cabin. And you know, I'm, I'm almost inclined to go the fishing cabin route. It feels like, especially in the middle of Verde Beach, this would be a really special place if you had the ability to fish around here. And this might just be me being a softy. My, my youngest daughter recently asked me to go fishing with her. And uh, I, I, I'm not a huge fisherman anymore. Used to when I was a kid, but I'll take her, I'll take her. Especially if it looked like this, this would be awesome. <laughs> and then we'll add just one more normal pier. And this one I've gotta be a little bit more careful with because it does wanna overlap the road. And if it does overlap the road, the consequence is that the road will go away. Don't want that at all. Then I want to add a couple more of these live oaks kind of right by the water, right at the edge. And of course, of course, the city park assets are going to need power. So that is a little frustrating, but not insurmountable. I think if we get it here, it might be close enough. There we go. There we go. So that's the, that is the value of having this here. There's one more area where we have an asset that needs some power. We've got a gazebo over here. So we will again add in an earthquake detector. And this has power, I believe. Oh no, this needs power. So we can add that right about here. And it already is, is fairly well hidden. And we've got some wildlife in the park. I love to see that. I love to see that. Got a cougar right there. And there we go. I think that this is a monster improvement to the park. It was what the park was missing and I really dig it. I do want to do one thing though. I want to grab the view from a vehicle and I, want, I just want to see what does it look like coming along here and you can't really see it, which is A-OK -okay with me. That is completely fine. That also means that we can't see that water pumping station, which is perfect. And with this working well, we're going to move on to our second project, which is adding a realistic functioning beach right here. So that you might be thinking I'm going to use the asset by Richie and it's going to be very similar, but we're going to create our own because this is Verde Beach. And if we want custom assets, we have to make them ourselves. So we're going to swing on over to the asset editor and create 10, yes, 10 individual beach assets. And we'll be right back. To begin, we're gonna go into the editors. And if this option is grayed out for you, it's likely because you have the 81 tiles mod enabled. You'll need to disable that and then reboot into City Skylines and then this option will be available to you. And then we'll go into asset editor and create a new asset. And then you select the theme. I'm gonna select a tropical theme because it's Verde Beach. And once you're in, you'll be greeted to the asset importer screen. So we're gonna select a park and go to continue. And here we are. So a couple of things to know about this, this little area right here is your asset work area and the arrow indicates where the asset would clip to a road. For our beach, we're going to want this to be narrow because we're going to create a bunch of different variations of the beach. I think we're going to start out with four and then for length, I want this to be as long as possible. So we'll go 16. Now I want you to imagine the roads right here and the waters down here. And this is the way our asset will be oriented. So now we'll go through the properties of the asset and we have this as always unlocked we don't have to select a milestone. We aren't going to select the sub mesh for the building general. We want this available in the game. It's not circular and we want to make sure the most important thing to look at here is we do not want flattened terrain selected. That would make this flat when you place it. We don't want that under electricity. We're saying this doesn't consume any electricity, which I think is appropriate. Now under game common, here's where you get to select a couple of things that maybe are of interest to you. Construction cost, this is the cost to actually build the item. I think 500 is fine. For fire hazard, we're gonna make this zero. It's Verde Beach after all. And the tolerance, we'll just leave that where it is. For garbage accumulation, I'm gonna increase this to five. So this will need a garbage truck going there to actually collect garbage. And then for maintenance cost, 100, that's completely fine as well. Now here's where the magic really is. This is what is going to draw people to this asset. And I'm gonna increase all of these. So you select by tourist wealth level. And for all of them, we're going to increase it to 250. This is actually less than the asset in the Steam Workshop, and it's still probably overkill. And then for water, we're not going to adjust this at all. It will not consume any water and it will not require sewage. And then for the entertainment, we are going to increase this pretty dramatically. Again, we'll go 250 and then I want to increase the radius 
to 2,500. So I wanna draw people from all over the place to this asset. And now we're gonna leave this. We're gonna create maybe eight of these and I wanna leave these settings as is for all of them. And I wanna focus on the things that are gonna be common to all of the assets that we create. It's really just the markers. So markers are what are gonna draw people to your asset to a specific location. So what we are going to do is place a couple of these hang around markers on the beach end. And that is where people will go. And this is where people are going to be quote unquote swimming. <laughs> They'll be swimming with their clothes on, but it is gonna be where we see people in the water. So we have a whole bunch of markers there. So this will be our base beach. And we are gonna create a bunch of different variations maybe in the upwards of eight. And the variations will have different things such as beach furniture, maybe some concessions, parking, and even a path going through here. But I wanna save this one first. This one is complete. So we're gonna select our asset editor settings. And what I wanna do is find a screenshot. So I, I like to select this middle one first and then look and make sure that we're centered for all of these. And basically you have a camera, you have to select all of them and then you hit escape and you can save the asset. We're just gonna call this CPP Beach One. So you need to name your asset, select a short description, and then the, the tooltip image is what we just created. So we just need to select this, go over, and you see this, that is actually the spawn points, and they do have a coloring associated with them, kind of a ruining. It's not a big deal because we're gonna have those in the water and they'll be on the beach and they'll look similar. And then we save that and we can keep going. So. The reason why we want all of our properties set up first is because now we are just gonna add on to this. And I think we'll start out with an asset that has some parking. So we'll just go into our surface tool, select pavement, and then draw a little pavement right here. And then we'll go under common streets and we can select some parking spaces. So I'm gonna zoom in and we'll place a couple of parking stalls. And then for good measure, I think we're gonna add just a bit of landscaping. So that's under decoration. And I like to go with the wild hedge here. And then for good measure, we'll add a California young palm. And that is about good enough for this one. Let's just get our pictures taken. And then remember to rename this, otherwise you'll overwrite it. And you've got to look for your new pictures. So there we go, we've got the parking stalls there and we can save that. And now we have our second asset. Now, before we get rid of this, I want to create a variation of this. The variation is basically going to be this exact same beach scene with some seating. So let's add some seating underneath residential and then home yard. And we are going to go with some of the really basic vanilla deck chairs. The main reason for this is, well, first of all, it'll open up this to more people. So I'm creating this and I'm going to share it on the workshop so all of you can take a look. So we're going to use these. These also draw people to them, which I think is important. And they do change colors as you place them. So if you don't like the colors that you get, just uh, click again. And there we go. So we will save this one. And it's much the same story. Give it a new name, give it a new description, give it a new asset name, select your pictures and hit save. So now we're gonna get rid of all of our parking. And I wanna create a version of that same asset, but I want it to have paths. So we're going to go into our decorations and paths and there's a couple of things I really want you to think about. So if you wanted to use the park life or campus paths, you can do that, but they are going to self level. The other thing that I want you to realize is that in the asset editor, you have the ability to create the propless variants of these paths. So you could go ahead and use a university path. You just got to keep in mind that the moment you place this, this is flat up here. So. I, for my purposes, want the control that I'll have over this asset in game by using some of the pavement paths. So the other thing that's nice about these is they don't have the brakes that you sometimes see if you were to use this. And what I mean by that is that little bend right there, it drives me crazy. <laughs> so that's just more of a me thing than a you thing, but uh, it is a thing nonetheless. What we're going to do is at the top near the road, I'm going to go a little bit off without any snap twos on. We're going to send this along. And I also want a bike path here. Even though this is overhanging, what we're going to see is that we'll have the ability to snap to the outside and that asset will extend beyond. So we're going to save this as another asset. And we have our beach with multi-use path. So we'll save that one. And much like the parking, I want to have a version of this with some seating. 
and the seating again can be found in a residential, home yard, and then here is our deck chair and the umbrellas that we have. And then once again, we'll save this asset. So it's kind of the same story over and over. And now we'll get rid of this and we're gonna create a brand new variant. And this one, I wanna have some sort of concessions. So this one, if we go under parks and then park equipment, we do have some of these food stalls. So what I'm gonna do is place one of them up here and then another one over here. And then we need some sidewalks or some sort of ground tile going to it. And in thinking about this one, I think we're gonna go a little bit less straight vanilla than we had before. I'm gonna use some mid-century modern assets for this. We'll also add some trash receptacles and a bit of landscaping, maybe just one of these trees that we used before. And then the very last thing that I wanna to do to make this functional is add a hangout marker right in front of it. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And there we go. We've got it set up on both sides. So this is one on this is one of our other assets. So we're gonna take some pictures again. And there we've got it all set up. A beach with concessions. And now we will once again add in our seating. And this is a good time. Now that we've used a bit of mid-century modern stuff, you might wonder why I'm not just using all of the new mid-century modern chairs. They're very attractive, but they don't actually uh, have people sitting in them. So this is just a prop. Nothing will happen if you place it. It'll always be empty. Completely fine if you're okay with that, but I want these to have people sitting in them. And this is interesting. I can't actually place more of these because of the number of props I have up here. So you have a limit of 64 props or trees, and I've used them up. So what we are going to do is try to make this look a bit bigger by spreading things out and that'll have to be good enough. The only other thing I could do would be to maybe remove the tree. That'll help some, and then we'll save this. And then finally, the last one that I wanted to put together was another variation of the beach with chairs. So we'll get rid of that, start with a completely fresh palette, and there we go, that's good enough. And I'm realizing that I thought that I had already created one of these. So we're going to make a second one of these and we'll be right back. And I ended up creating a few more, including this most recent one, which has some really nicely lined up chairs. This is kind of the sort of thing you'd see at a resort. And with that, we are going to head back to Verde Beach. All right. Now that we have our beach assets put together, I want to show you what are, where I want to place these. I want to have a beach right here and another one kind of wrapping around here at, at, at some point. So we're going to figure out the exact locations as we select our beach assets that we're going to use here. So our new beach assets are going to be found underneath parks and plazas. And they'll be right here under parks. And there's a whole bunch of them. I love it. So I want to start out with the beach that has parking and some chairs. And for this to look its very best, we're going to need a fairly straight chunk of beach. And this is specific to the one with parking. You can see that looks pretty darn nice. And now I want to switch it up and we will have some concessions. And then we'll go back to having some parking here. And you see that this is kind of where it ends, where I can't make this line up very nicely anymore. So I want to switch over to some of our other beach assets. We have beach with chairs, beach with chairs two, beach with chairs three. That's what we're going to use extensively in another part. So we're going to alternate between these two. The nice thing is if it is not straight, it'll slide against the road. And there we go. And it's fun to take a look at this and look at all of those umbrellas. And each one of these spots is going to be drawing people in. Oh, I'm so excited to get this thing moving. So the very first thing that we need to do is this is this asset. First of all, I'm just going to say if you prefer Richie's asset in the workshop, go use that one. If you prefer to make your own, go do that. And if you want to use mine, they are in the workshop in the video description. It's a it's a fun asset to create and it's a fun asset to use. And it's going to work exactly the same as Richie's. So we're going to want to turn our contours on and bring our water level to cover our little markers here. So I'm going to grab this terrain height here. We're at a moderate brush strength and we have a small brush size. We'll enlarge in that in just a moment, but I want to bring this here and we want to bring this a little bit beyond where we need it to be. 
And the reason for that is we're gonna feather our terrain. And we may wanna get rid of this beach segment that we added right against the path. I think it's gonna be too much, too difficult. And now is where we go to our lowest brush strength and a very moderate brush size after we get this initial bit done and we wanna do some of our fine tune adjustments. So getting this nice and straight along here and making sure that we're down far enough. Also got that rock in the water. I don't love that. We're probably gonna get rid of that. And now I'm gonna go along and just ensure that everything along the edge of the water looks really good. And we could extend this out even further if we wanted to. The way to do that would basically just be to grab the slope terrain tool, right mouse click up here, and then slope it up even further, probably on a higher brush strength. And that would make this a bit steeper. It's really all personal preference and how you wanna do it is up to you. For me, I think I'm pretty okay with how it was. So I'll kind of bring it back to the way it was, have a little bit of variation there. And then we're gonna get a smaller brush size and I'm gonna pull this out to fix this and then get this to the lowest brush strength and just grab the edge of this. And I think truthfully, we're gonna to need to get rid of one more beach segment and that's completely fine. And we'll turn our contours off and get take a look at this. And boy, it's looking pretty darn good. I absolutely dig this. I do think I'd like to see this be a little bit more sloped out. So there's just a little bit of playing that we're gonna to need to do with this. So coming along here and trying to flatten this out. The other thing that you could do, if your beach is not this flat at the top, you could come by with a small brush strength, and especially with these parking lot assets, you're gonna to wanna to come through, grab a flat height and pull it up. And you can do that just at the top so that your cars aren't pointing towards the water. <laughs> that is a ton better. So with this, I do want to see some folks at the beach. So we're gonna let this run for just a moment. And you can finally start to see it. We've got some folks coming and they're running towards the water. And that is exactly what we want to see there. Maybe, maybe it's a little bit too deep, actually. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of people sitting underwater. That is not the point. You know, but certainly look at your map <laughs> underwater. <laughs> this is an easy fix. We are going to grab our contours again and be real gentle about this and try to raise it up one meter and see if their heads start poking out of the water. And look at that. We've got Philip and his head is poking out of the water. I think that that means that this is our terrain height. I'm glad to see that you like swimming, Philip. I'm really glad to see that. <laughs> all right, so let's grab this terrain height and bring it all the way along our beach. Right, let's zoom in and take a look. And it's important to remember that anytime you play with water, things could be a little wacky for a bit. So we are gonna let this run and see things normalize. And you know, this is a weird spot where I think that half of the time it's perfect and half the time it's not. So I'm gonna try one more time and maybe this height back here is the perfect one. Obviously with all of this, it's, it's just a lot of guessing and checking and trying to figure out what is gonna be perfect for your little community. For me, I just wanna make sure that everyone is at least in the water, but not submerged. <laughs> and you know, I think I'm, I'm satisfied with this. And just look at all of the activity that we have here. We've got folks that are in the water. We've got folks that are sitting up here. This is an absolutely fantastic way to bring some life to your beach. So I want to give a huge shout out to Richie for putting together the original realistic functioning beach asset. And I'm really excited that if you wanted to be able to recreate this yourself and do something custom, you have the ability to do so because it is something that you can do in a vanilla game. And now I want to come over here and add just a little bit more. So the idea is basically maybe we take a little area right here and we add just a small beach. And now that we have a completely fresh slate, I wanna add some of these new beaches. So we're gonna go back in here and the one I wanna use is going to be this beach with multi-use path. 
So the reason I want to use this one is if we do this right, we could pull this beach up here and still have a connection between these paths. Might look a little bit strange, but I think it's going to work just fine. And now we need to make connections with our path. So the way that we're going to do this is we'll just grab these paths and we'll start out with just a regular pedestrian path. And I have nothing on, no, none of the snap twos. And we'll just make a nice connection right in there. Then we'll switch over to our multi-use path and do the exact same thing. Now, what we are going to try here is to mix it up just a bit. So I'm going to run this back here and then we'll convert this over to be just a regular pedestrian path right there. And then we do have our park gate. It's completely fine by me. And there we go. We've got a bike path going all the way around here. And then we just need to make our final connection over here. And I think we're going to bring these two networks together. Actually, we've got to, we should probably make our connections through here. It looks like they're connected. Maybe we just keep an eye on that. We just keep an eye on that. Now, I decided to call a bit of a mulligan here. Main reason for that is that bikers can use the normal paths, but walkers cannot go on the multi-use path. So I decided to terminate this bike path into just a regular pedestrian path. And now through here, I just want to have a little bit of landscaping. And this is something that I could add to the original asset. And truthfully, part of me kind of wishes that I did. And now let's get rid of all of these old trees and bring this new aesthetic all the way through. And last but not least, we need to ensure that this is underwater. So we'll grab our contours again. This time, though, it's going to be fairly simple for us because we're just going to steal it from right here. Holy cow. <laughs> we need to drop so far down. This is going to be a real thing. It's going to be a thing. <laughs> I didn't realize just how high up this part of the coast was. So this is going to be a more challenging spot. Perhaps maybe it wasn't our best location. But do you think that a resort would let this hamper their fun? Absolutely not. There we go. And I planted a bit of vegetation here. We're going to say that the resort did that in order to kind of protect some of the shoreline here from eroding. Now, there are concerns, and this one still may not work well. We've got a couple of the, the, these spots that are above our terrain height, so we're gonna try to bring those in. All right, I might just accept this. Sometimes you gotta take Ws that are, are more half Ws than anything else, and that's what we're gonna say this is. It's a half W, but, we're, but it's okay. That's probably as good as I get it. We're going to call that a win. Now, I'm seeing some interesting stuff happening here with our bike facilities. Folks are turning around. They're slingshotting back. And I think that what that is, is I didn't connect these. So I'm going to attempt to make these connections. And it's too short. I have to spread these out. So I think that we're going to take that as a lesson learned. I like the way this looks. And I think I might leave it. <laughs> Which... I oh, I am going to give myself this one pass. And I, I have a way that this could be resolved that I'm thinking of. The way that we might do it is to actually go back into the asset itself and remove one of these sides. I'm going to experiment with that. And until then, I think we're just going to leave it because this isn't necessarily necessary. It's really more of a recreational facility. The exact same bike facility is on the road here. So you don't really need it. Same thing with the pedestrian facility. There's a sidewalk here. All you got to do is dodge a bit of uh, the foliage that spilled its way into the sidewalk and you'll be just fine. All right. I like that a lot more. <laughs>
Oh, so much life, so much activity. Every single beach space is just packed. This is what I always imagined for Verde Beach. I think that we have made some excellent progress today. And what we need to do now is take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. thing is that folks are still visiting the beach at night. I don't think that this would be the safest time to be here, but uh, who am I? <laughs> the other thing that I, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about now after creating these assets is it'd be really nice to have some sort of lifeguard booth of some sort. I'm not sure if there's anything that would be appropriate, but if you have something in mind, drop me a comment letting me know what you think could work because I would be willing to, to update these assets to make them a little bit better. Before we go, I've got one more thing to talk about, and that is our transit fixes. So I want to show you a little something that was pointed out in the comments. Basically, this asset has a bug in it right now. And as a result, monorail is not coming to this station. And we've got all of these folks waiting. So there are two ways that we could address this. We could obviously bring monorail in. But it sounds like Colossal Order is aware of this bug. So my solution is going to be to simply remove monorail from this platform. So that'll end up stopping back here, which is completely fine. And then the other thing that I wanted to do, this is a huge shout out to Planner Pete here. He pointed out that one of the things that I screwed up on is we have this monorail station out here. And the reason I put this out here is I did not believe that there was a hub that would allow you to transfer between monorail and tram. And I didn't really understand why that was the case. Well, here's why because it actually exists <laughs> and I just missed it. So I'm gonna pause this for a split second. We're gonna go into our public transport hubs, select monorail, and I don't even need to select tram because there's not that many. It's right here, it's right in the middle. So this is the same size as a monorail station. And then we'll have to select our for you tram road. And I did this before I messed with this because I want to be able to simply grab this stop and move it. And if I get rid of this station, that becomes infinitely more difficult. So now I can get rid of this and convert this road back. And we'll uh, just put these houses back. And that commercial building as well. And no one has to worry about the mistake that I made. This now should work really well for us. And we should probably make sure that we have a tram stop close by. And look at that. This is one thing that I mentioned last time. I wanted a tram stop really close to the monorail and now I can do it. It's right inside of it. This is awesome. Great asset and good looking out planner, Pete. I always appreciate the help and the suggestions. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this build today. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really appreciate your time today. Remember all of the links to the, these assets will be in the video description. And I really can't wait to see you in the next one. It's a privilege to bring these to you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.